to Fisbo or not to Fisbo? Should I sell on my own? I don't need a broker. I'm gonna get millions more. I'm gonna get all the money and plus some. I'm gonna list it at a million, I'm gonna get 1.3. So welcome to the video. And obviously that was probably running through some people's minds as they list it on their own. I am someone that actually reaches out proactively to for sale by owners. Some of them do not like that, which is completely fine. And some of them do like that. A lot of my business over the last year, actually probably a year and a half has been coming from for sale by owners. So it's about a 60% referral, 40% for sale by owners. And as the market changes, obviously it's gonna be probably be more for sale by owners than referrals because referrals, they are staying put and for sale by owners are either moving because they need more space, they need to downsize, they want that second home. Whatever the case is, they are putting their home on the market. So I have a really, really good idea of not only just the qualms about it, but all the pressures that come with it, okay? And I feel for for sale by owners. I'm not that pushy broker that's like, you need to list. It's like, no dude, you gotta look at each situation and say, okay, where are you pricing it at? Do you have the time? And are you okay with being slammed by all of these brokers and people that are gonna be calling you for the listing, other people that are gonna be scheduling showings, open houses, the things like that. So I'm gonna give you the pros and the cons and you make the decision. That's essentially what it is. So it's it's really, it comes down to, listen, if it was free, obviously everybody would be hiring a broker, but as an independent contractor, our incentive to sell your home is for, to, to live. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. If you don't sell your home, you're not gonna be happy. If we don't sell your home, we can't pay our bills. So our incentive, is way more than yours. Yours is like, I live here, I might need to sell, but I might not need to sell. Like, what's your motivation? Are you saying only if I get a certain price, I have a net on my price? Our incentive is that this is our job, this is our livelihood, this is how we pay for everything. That's our incentive. Let's go into the pros of For Sell By Owner. First of all, obviously the elephant in the room is you save 6% commission. I don't know what it is outside of New York City. In New York City, it's 6% and all the big brokerages are doing that. Obviously, I used to be at a big brokerage, Halstead Property, and I would go to my manager anytime someone would come in with a lower compensation and say, hey, listen, Brown Howard Stevens said this uh, to the owner or Corcoran, Elliman, Sotheby's, Compass said something. Compass wasn't that big actually when I was at Halstead. Obviously, they've taken a lot of money from SoftBank, so they've kind of risen to very big heights. I guess that's, that's, that's a big height. So the biggest thing is the 6% co compensation. Selling a million dollars, 60K. It's a lot of money. That's 6% of your home value. So let's go into that. So what does the 6% entail? So essentially, obviously, I'm not gonna get into the value of a real estate agent, but that's real cash money that you're not gonna be getting if you hire a real estate agent. So that's pro number one. Number two is you know your apartment, okay? You've lived there. You've either had it as an investment, a pia a primary residence, you had your son or daughter there, maybe you had your parents there, whatever the case is, you know the building. You know the comparables probably better than the real estate agent without actually that agent doing any research unless it's a building expert. You also know the building, so you know what's good, what's bad, you know the assessments that are coming up, you know that the, the roof needs to get replaced or the facade is gonna be coming up as repairs of the elevator or the lobby or renovations somewhere in the building is gonna be happening in the near future. You also know the amenities, you know the co-purchasing, whether any kind of say sublet policy is in place, you know all of that, okay? We have to gather that information to sell your home. So in other words, through the management company, through you and all of our resources. So you know your building and you know your apartment way better. You also know the neighborhood, you know, where you shop, you know, obviously the subways is, are easy and things like that, but you're already coming in with an advantage like that. That helps out. You also know how your board functions. So your board could be really challenging when it comes to certain types of buyers. In other words, they don't like Pieter, second homes, but they only want investment or they only want primary residence, okay? Or a certain amount where they don't allow co-purchasing or debt income ratio, post-closing liquidity, all these things that we have to find out so you already know. Third is most apartments actually sell themselves in a good market. 
And if you do it right. That's kind of the caveat, is that you put your home on the market, it, this is the best way that I equate it to. So there's a lot of real estate agents that got into the business and they said, well, I have my real estate license, I think everyone is gonna be working with me. My Aunt Nellie, who's a millionaire, my Uncle Bob, who owns a Soho Loft, is obviously gonna be listing with me. Or just because I got my real estate agent, everyone on my social media channel and account are going to be using me in their purchase. Until that one person says, actually, I'm using someone else and I'm not using you. So it's the same thing when you put your home on the market, you expect just because you put your home on the market that it's gonna sell. It's not the case, but if you do it right, most apartments will sell themselves. So obviously the three big things is that you have to show it properly, you have to price it properly, you have to market properly. Those are three very distinct things that you have to do correctly. If you do those things correctly, it will sell, okay? So those that's the, that's the pro of listing. We're still going on. Many buyers come within the building. So in other words, you go to the doorman, you paper the building, you put in the, the, the building link that says, I'm putting my home, you knock on the doors. Hey, listen, maybe your neighbor wants to blow through the wall and expand their apartment. Maybe the person upstairs or downstairs wants to make a duplex. Or maybe someone has a two bedroom, they want a, a one bedroom, or they have a one bedroom and they want your two bedroom. So a lot of them come within the building. Obviously, you also have a big network of friends. So in other words, you could post it on social media, you could just talk about it through colleagues and things like that. You could find them that way. So you know the building, if you price it correctly, you will save the 6%. Moving on, you get immediate feedback. So a lot of the, the questions that come from a lot of the owners is that, I don't know why my home is not selling, okay? So I, I've taken over, I don't know, maybe 10 apartments from people, from brokers that have previously listed it. And one of the biggest things that I heard was, I don't know what the feedback is. The feedback is not immediate. In other words, why is it still on the market? Is it because it's staged or it's not staged? Is it because I need to paint something or because the view isn't good? Is it the price? Is it the marketing? Is it we're not showing it properly? Is, is it the open houses? So when you're doing the showings, you're getting immediate feedback. You feel the, the tension in the air of, are the buyers responding to my new renovation? Am I priced properly? Am I showing it properly? Where are people actually really gathering? Is it the kitchen? Is it the view? Is it the building? Is it the area? Is it the location within the area? Things like that. Do they love the shopping? So you get that immediate feedback. People say that all the time. I love this building or I've, I've always wanted to live in this area and then you sell the area. So you're getting the immediate feedback. What I have to say before I go into the cons of for sub my owners is that I have to say that if done properly, most homes should sell, okay? If done properly, through an owner, most homes should sell. The reasons they don't sell is what I'm about to discuss, the cons of for sale by owners. Number one is the time. It becomes a part-time job, it really does. So the part-time job includes you have to get it prepped. So in other words, professional cleaners, you have to look around objectively, not subjectively, because you may love the kitchen, but someone else says, ah, yeah, I'm gonna have to gut this. Then the next person comes in, I need to gut this. And then you start getting offended and you say, why are people saying they need to gut my kitchen? My kitchen is beautiful, it's incredible, it's perfect. It's a, I, I, I renovated it 20 years ago and I spent $50,000 on it. But the problem is, you have to look at it objectively and just the best way to look at it objectively is you walk outside your build or walk outside of maybe even your building, walk outside your apartment, you walk in, you say, if I was buying this again for the first time in 20 years, what would, what would I do? Would I redo the kitchen, bathroom, repaint, do the flooring? Maybe there's too much stuff in the apartment. So the first thing is the time. You have to prep the home. You have to get the offering plan, the financials, the purchase application. You have to do all your research on pricing. You also obviously have to get the photographer. You have to pay the money, get the description. Everything has to go into prepping. Then you obviously have to, which is even harder, is field all of the calls from brokers, from buyers, from people that are within your building that say it's too low priced or, you have to get all of these people into your apartment to see it, okay? The, 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 that's not easy, okay? A lot of people think, oh, I'm just gonna answer a couple of emails. No, you're answering hundreds of emails, it, especially if it's a forest sale by owner because you're getting 100 plus brokers and then you have to weed out the good brokers from the bad brokers and then you don't know who's, who actually has a buyer, who doesn't have a buyer and then you have, you have to go in and say, okay, who actually is a buyer as opposed to a broker and then you have to obviously not only show it, people may not show, they'll cancel last minute, then you have to host open houses so it's very time consuming. Number two is the professional marketing, okay? A lot of people think, like I said, in the pros of for sale by owner is that most homes sell. 
The con of that is that most homes that are for sale under don't sell for one of three reasons. And one of the reasons is it's not professionally marketed. So professionally marketed means beautiful photos of your space, not taken on your phone, not taken on your iPhone, vertically, without actually retouching it, bring in a professional photographer, and that's the easiest way. You bring in a professional photographer, maybe a videographer to do a walkthrough. You also have to have a floor plan person come in. It's all done to just lift your home so it seems like the price is justified. The description has to be good. So all professional marketing, obviously on Street Easy. Moving on, number three is that there is a lack of in-market data. So in other words, a lot of people live within their building, but they are so busy, they don't look at comparables. They don't, they're, they're not really noticing how board packages are going through. In other words, are sublet policies now not allowed? Are you not allowed to co-purchase? Are students allowed in the building? Parents buying for students, you know, cash only. There's so many things. Are there too many investment units? So the actual lack of market data. So market data includes price per square foot, obviously comparables, and then what's available right now. A lot of people, they don't do the research and they think they can get a certain price, but unfortunately they can't. And that's pretty much why most people actually end up listing because it's overpriced and they don't have that market data or they don't have the gall to actually put it at where the market will buy it. If it's worth 800,000, they put it at 900,000, it's not gonna sell. Or I should say number four is negotiating. When was the last time you have negotiated a six-figure, seven, eight-figure deal, or even a nine-figure deal? Okay, obviously, nine figures, you're obviously bringing in a broker, eight-figure deal, you're bringing in a broker, but seven and six-figure deals, when was the last time you negotiated that? You think that coming down from a million dollars to 930 isn't a big deal, but the problem is, if a broker, which is 6%, so work with me on these numbers, is that if a broker comes in at 6%, there you you're netting netting 940 but if you go down to 930 that means that that broker which would have saved you time saved you money putting together the board package ensuring that you get the best qualified buyer maybe even getting a bidding war it wasn't worth it because you're getting lower than that six percent work with me on that numbers right there that, that's really what it comes down to so negotiating is everything it's asking for the sale. It's asking to come higher. Most people feel uncomfortable with negotiating. Most people feel uncomfortable with sales. Most people don't know how to sell, which is the last one, but I'll bring up right here, is they, they feel weird. Are you ready to move forward? Are you gonna sign? Are you okay with this price? Let's, let's get this board package in. Sign the contract. Let's close on this date. A lot of people are uncomfortable actually asking those questions or giving, as Brian Buffini says, giving the necessary nudge. Last thing is the listings awareness. So they'll, go, they'll post it on the New York Times or they'll post it on Zillow or Trulia. But the problem is there's only two areas that homes are sold. Brokers and street easy. That's it. Brokers, which have an internal system. It's called the RLS, not the MLS, because we have to be special in New York City. So it's the RLS instead of the MLS and then through street easy. If you are doing a for sale by owner, do it on street easy because that will actually open it up to buyers. But the thing is, what I've noticed is that more buyers are working with brokers. And the reason being is that they would rather save time rather than doing all of the garbage, the showings, scheduling it, the not only the, the contract, but obviously putting together the board package, scheduling the second, they just want it done for them, okay? They want to save the time. They, they, they have so much stuff going on in their life. They're like, you handle it, you do it. That's why I hired you. And the thing is, if you only put it on Zillow, which nobody looks at, Trulia, which nobody looks at, New York Times, which nobody looks at, or even if you put it on street easy is that a lot of the buyers are going to bring in their their buyer's agent and you still have to pay a commission if you don't put in the rls you're missing thirty-five thousand brokers that are on the mls that that have buyers that are not even seeing it because a lot of the buyers are saying you agent you handle everything and if it's not available to them you're never going to see it so it's really listing awareness so the pros of for sale by owner obviously saving six percent you know you're building apartment renovations better than anyone number three is most apartments sell themselves number four number four yeah is that many of the buyers come within the building so you don't even have to market outside of that number five is you get immediate feedback the cons are how much time it takes it's not professionally marketed 
you have a lack of in-market data. In other words, obviously what the co-op wants, how to qualify a buyer going through the contract phase and things like that. Negotiating, which is the biggest thing, honestly. Uh, listing awareness, which is you're relying on websites that buyers aren't even looking at, uh, say social media and New York Times and things like that. And then the lack of salesmanship. So the lack of salesmanship, which I kind of covered before, is they just don't have enthusiasm. Owners don't have enthusiasm selling their apartment, which is such a shame because someone will completely redo their kitchen for 75, 80, hundred thousand dollars. And they're like, well, here's the kitchen. Here's the kitchen. This kitchen is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Sell me this kitchen. That's, that's, you know, we have an incentive to sell the kitchen. So do you really save 6%? It's up to you, do the math. If you put it on properly and you, and you don't care about your time and you don't have a full-time job and you have no motivation to actually sell and it's, you're fine sitting there and getting just pounded by brokers calling you every single day for the listing and you don't know who's real, who's not real and then you have buyers that are coming in that are lowballing you because you're a for sale by owner, I think that's where you say, is it worth it or not worth it? So. I'll leave you guys with that. Uh, actually, I'll leave you with this, which is out of, I would say, 100 for sale by owners, from my experience, is that 90 will list, five will sell, and five will go off the market. In other words, they say, I'm not gonna sell it, I didn't like the price, I don't like the brokers, I, it's not the right market, or we decided to stay. So 90 are gonna list with an agent, five will sell, five will just be taken off the market. That's completely unofficial, but that's from a year and a half of data in my brain that says, you're probably gonna list, it depends on the price, depends on the commission, depends on the timing, how is it being marketed, how is it being shown, how are the open houses, how's the co-op, how's the area, how's the overall marketplace, a lot of things going on. Have an amazing day, subscribe to the video, and as always, if you have any questions, charles at botanstin.com. Talk to you guys soon.